Hello artists, I'm here today to walk you through our next project. We're going to begin our op art or optical illusion art. Um, and as I always do, I'm just gonna walk you down through the module um, and get you through all of the steps and all of the pieces that are actually graded. Um, and so when this is actually loaded, right up here at the very top is going to be Mrs. Horman's instructions for op art. Um, so that'll be there once um, once we're finished with this recording. So let's work our way down through the project. So we always start with the teacher talk, right? The, we always start with the, the you know, important lessons and questions, which is how can I use line and color to create an optical illusion? How can studying the history of op art help you um, create a work of art of your own? And how can you determine what material or medium to use for your work of art? I'm gonna show you a couple of different ones. We're gonna look at some artists and artwork. We're gonna think about color and line. Um, you're gonna to get to pick your medium um, and you're gonna really think about your color choice. Uh, this is all that teachery stuff and you just need some pencil and paper um, or maybe acrylics or markers or whatever it is that you want to um, work on. Here's your vocabulary, the really important vocabulary for op art about color theory and primary and secondary and tertiary colors and your grayscale and the ideas of neutrals and tints and shades and tone, but also really thinking about um, back here as we get you know down here where we have to really think about contrast and line quality and stuff like that. So that being said, we'll go back to the module as always. It's gonna go really slowly today. I'm not really sure what's happening, why it's so slow today. We're gonna to go back to the module and we're gonna go here to the op art introduction, which is always that PowerPoint that I share with you at the beginning of the unit where we sort of lay out what we're gonna do. So op art, short for optical art or optical illusion art, is a style of art that uses your eye to create optical illusions. And we're looking at movement and hidden images and vibrating patterns and cool stuff like that. What's interesting is historically the term op art wasn't used really until 1964. Um, it's a really new concept. Uh, this is Bridget Riley. She is considered to be one of the best op artists um, around, like amazing. She's still alive actually making amazing work. And this is really her big seminal work that was really like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. Um, here's some more of Bridget Riley's work. And as you're staring at it and your eyes doing all crazy things, um, think about that that's what we're trying to accomplish with our artwork. Um, I love this one so much. Um, uh, another one of our most famous artists um, is Vassarelli. Um, and so he does a lot of really cool stuff too. What you'll notice with a lot of Bridget Riley's stuff, not all, but a lot, a lot of Bridget Riley's stuff is black and white. Um, Vassarelli works a lot more in color. Um, and while Bridget Riley worked in canvas, Vassarelli also makes sculptures. Um, and so, you know, it's a really cool um, uh, medium and a really cool uh, form of art. Um, we're going to talk specifically about movements, vibrations, and warping. So movement is um, any optical illusion that makes your eye think that it's moving. Um, and that can be done by uh, using contrasting colors. Um, and it's really cool because your eye just gets all wackadoodled out and it doesn't know what to do. Um, so these are some examples of, of op art that move. I love this one. It whacks my eye out so bad. Um, and a lot of them are accomplished, like I said, by the use of complementary colors. Colors opposite each other on the color wheel. Um, and so th this is movement. This is uh, stuff that makes your eye feel like it's moving. So then there's a, uh, another round of uh, a different uh, vari variation of art that's called vibration, where it's almost like it's uh, it, exactly what it says, like it's vibrating. Oh, that's a terrible slide, Miss Sorman. Um, so, you know, this one is is you know, crazy. And this one, I love these. They're just so amazing. I'm going to go clean up this PowerPoint when we're done and get rid of those boxes I thought I had. I love this one so much. Um, so here's our vibrations. Um, and then we get into warping, which is actually my favorite um, kind of op art. I love things that look like they are warped or distended or distorted. Um, and so warping is my favorite where you have this idea that um, the piece 
has dimension to it. Like it's actually three dimensional. Um, and so I love warping. And of course, one of the best examples of warping ever is Bridget Riley. Um, so these are just beautiful works and I love them. Um, some have all three. Uh, so your project, you're going to make, actually, you're going to make two. I altered this um, after um, I put it together. Um, we're going to make two. Um, uh, so we're going to try that, and I'll show you what we're going to do. So here are really cool ones, um, and here are some warping worms. They're very neat. I, They're kind of like, because they're worms, they're kind of gross to me. Um, but here's a tutorial for how to do the warping worms. So if you decide that you want to do worms, you can go back here. Um, here are some vibrations. Okay. Here's the 3D hand um, and a tutorial for that. But, I, you know, there's a 3D hand that you do when you're in kindergarten. I want something a little more complex because this is a higher level art class. I love this one. Um, I love this one, the hand drawing the hand. Uh, so let's, you know, work on uh, that. This is the hand. Very cool. Lots of cool examples. Um, I love this. I love stitch. Stitch is like my jam. And so I love this one. Okay. So that's warping. This is a really cool one. The cat and the tree. So lots of things can be warped, uh, not just your hand. Then this is called helicoptering. It's where everything comes to a center point. Um, and this is my favorite. Uh, and here's some samples on how to do that. Um, and then there's some other, like this is a variation of helicopters with worms, like just really cool. Um, this is called a ricochet, which is where it like swirls in. Um, and here's the tutorial for that. Um, so I like to try to give you as many different things as possible. Here's a grid drawing. Um, and I love this one. Again, complementary colors. Um, uh, complementary colors. This one's fabulous. Um, uh, this person put their name in their one. I think it's cool. This one put a, a unicorn. Here's some basic concepts on how to do a warping um, and sort of a step-by-step -step of what that looks like. Here's a video of how to do an op art grid and circle. Here's some hearts. Um, and then there's just lots of other cool variations. So you can scroll through this and see lots of different things that you can create with op art. So we'll go back to the module and see what we're going to do next. Um, and then you always have artist research because how do you know what kind of art to make unless you sort of research and see what kind of art is out there. So, um, oh, I forgot to change this, um, her work, sorry about that. Um, so you can look at um, Bridget Riley. Um, also, Vassarelli is really cool. MC Escher is amazing. Um, or just Google op art and see who you can find. And it asks you to do a little bit of work on Bridget Riley and then find another op art artist. You've done this a million times, this artist research. So you know exactly what you're doing here. Okay, then project possibilities, we come down here. And I broke that same one down for you again, where I took out all of the other um, introductory stuff and just brought it down to the possibilities with the tutorials. So if you're thinking about needing um, a place to get your, you know, get the video and stuff like that, this is the one, this is just the possibilities. Okay, I'm trying to make it as user-friendly as possible. Um, so then we come down here, op art activity handout. Then you're gonna do this cool thing. Um, you're gonna practice um, a bunch of different uh, kinds of art. Uh, the parabolic, optical curves, pop-out sphere, one with a focal point. You'll do hidden shapes, layered shapes, and scribble, and then finally folded paper. So that's one of the activities that you have to do. We'll go back to the module again come down here. Whoops, where is it? Okay. Uh, and this is the actual practice sheet, which if you want to print it out, you can. I just laid it out for you um, like this. But if you don't have access to a printer, you can just uh, make a thing with um, eight squares uh, and label them and then answer these questions. Which technique do you prefer and why? Um, which will you use for your project? And which two do you think you might combine if you wanted to do something a little more complicated? Okay, so we're continuing our way down through. Finally, we get to the self-assessment and final assessment, which is always your, um, your rubric where you look at your point values and then you go through and rate yourself and then I go through and give you comments as well. And here you put comments about how you think you did. So did you explore optical illusion? Did you understand color theory and line? Did you, you know, really do some reflecting and think about um, geometrics and organics? How did you process your use of color? 
Did you use those elements and principles well, specifically color and line? Was your project on time? Did you, you know, turn things in? And it, are your lines crisp? Did you, you know, did you take time um, with that? So that's your um, your self-assessment and my final assessment of you. And then we'll go down through the resources. So this is a really cool introductory video. What is, and remember when you click them, you always have to go up here and click this corner. What is OpArt? This is a really instructional video about what OpArt is. It shows you lots of examples and it also talks about famous op artists and how to create some of the things that we're working on. So it's sort of like a background information thing and sort of a tutorial at the same time. Um, and then we get into uh, the second one here, learning about op art. Here's where you'll get some more information about other artists that will help you do your artist information sheet. Um, and as I said, you can just sort of see lots of different types of, they talk, there's clearly Bridget Riley, um, and we'll talk about how we got to app art. There's Victor Vassarelli, um, and there's tessellations from MC Escher. So you get to see a lot of different really cool artists in this, um, in this one. So it helps you figure out who you want to use for your artist research. All right. And then moving down the, um, the thing. Here is a video instruction on how to do the waving worms, how to do the hand, how to do the helicopters, how to do the ricochet, how to do the grid with circles. Here's your template. So your blank template where you will put everything in. And here's mine so that you can see what your template should look like when it's done. So here's my project. Here's my vocabulary where I made sure that I had my important vocabulary words with my color schemes. You're gonna need to do this. Your complements, blue and orange, red and green, um, purple and yellow, and then think about your warm colors and your cool colors and think about your grayscale. So I wanna see some of that on your homework. Here's, your art, here's my artist research. I did Bridget Riley and Frank Stella. Here is my op art worksheet. I filled my worksheet in. And then you're going to do two um, projects. You're going to do one that is black and white, and I'd like to see a process piece, so beginning, middle, finished. Okay, this is mine. And then one color piece. So beginning, this is what I what it looked like when I did it with Crayola, and then I went through and did it with Prismacolor, and you can see the difference in what you can accomplish with a Crayola colored pencil versus what you can accomplish with a Prismacolor pencil. And then I did a third one just because I wanted to show you some stuff. I forgot to take a step-by-step, -step, but what you're gonna see here is, notice that I did just one square here. I wanted to show you that you could, as you can see, I did lots of shading on the, um, on the sphere, but I didn't on the background. And you could, and that's what I did that one square there to show you. So what I did was I did a black and white one with marker. Um, I did um, a colored one with regular colored pencils and Prismacolor pencils, and this one is also colored marker. Now, with this one, I could have used oil pastels. Okay, so think about what your, um, what you want your pieces to look like. I'm gonna go back to the module one more time and show you um, again that that's your blank template. And then here are the things you have to do. You have to do your artist research. You have to do that practice worksheet, which is linked right here, number five. So they link back up top to the pieces that of the step. Um, you have to do your self-assessment from your thing and your final assessment, okay? So that is our activity on op art um, that we're gonna begin at the beginning of May. Uh, and I hope that you have a good time. Bye, guys.